Yeah, and yeah, this is the other thing. Uh, a green energy infrastructure will create a new society. Going back to it, this critical tipping point. That's what I say, like, and that moderator, when Bernie was, <laughs> she was talking about trade and, and, and he said, but it affects climate. She goes, let's talk, look, we're, getting, we're not talking about climate change yet, she said. And he goes, no, they're, they're, they're related. Trade and commerce affects the, the environment. Just like Dr. John McDougall said, food and diet and how we get our food and how we farm affects climate. And they, they, they try to make all these like separate issues. Like Tulsi talks about, and then Bernie adopted this, domestic policy can affect our foreign policy. And that's what I talk about. A Green New Deal, the, a real Green New Deal like Bernie's would actually fix so many issues. It would fix jobs. It would fix education. It would fix, um, you know, these trade tariffs that, that, that have hurt farmers. It would fix the flooding in Iowa that they talked about. This is the thing that drove me crazy. Nobody said this on stage during the debate. We're like, what about all this flooding? How would you deal with this? Would you relocate farmers? Which is a valid question to ask. And I wish someone would have said that the idea I've been saying for three years on this show, which is instead of a pipeline for oil and gas, a water pipeline. So Iowa floods in the spring, we take that water, drain it. I know there's engineers that can figure this out. <laughs> drain it and, and store some of it for when Iowa has a drought and disperse some of it for, for parts of the country that are in a drought. Boom. And if one of those pipeline leaks, are we going to have 380,000 you know, gallons of oil contaminate like what happened in, I believe, South Dakota? With Keystone? No. Like flooding's not good. A leaky pipeline, that could cause problems, but it's not gonna cause thousands of years of damage to the soil. That's the worst case scenario, by the way. A flooding, <laughs> a broken water pipe versus a broken oil pipe, it, it's not even a comparison. And that's the worst case scenario, again. Right? So that's what we could do. And think of all the jobs that creates. Think about all that. Think about if everybody started to go vegan, right? So, oh, you're gonna kick, you know, make all these cattle ranchers go out of business? No, you, that's part of a Green New Deal. You transition, you go to the cattle rancher, the dairy farmer, and you say, look, this ain't working anymore. We're gonna transition you. You're making this amount of money a year. We're gonna give you that amount of money and transition you into growing more of a sustainable crop that's better for the environment. Great, great. You work in a coal mine, you work in an oil refinery, you get the same salary while we transition you into a green job. Same salary. Go to, go to West Virginia, there's a bunch of out of work people and, and you know, out of work coal miners or factory work, excuse me, and say, I'm gonna give you a job, you, good union job, right? Making green energy. That soil bacteria article, I, I, I did a video on there's this soil bacteria that a bunch of European scientists discovered that pulls methane out of the, out of the soil and they, they can figure out, out of, they're going to figure out a way how to pull it out of the air. I did that article on the algae pulling CO2s out of the air at 400 times the rate of trees. I talked to Dr. Jill Stein and she said, Graham, we could plant a trillion trees for something like, I forget it was, a hundred or some hundred billion dollars, which is like nothing compared to what we spend on war. <sniffs> Trees everywhere. Like all of these solutions are right there to go. It would transform. We stop going to war. We stop fighting with each other. Everybody's got a job. Everyone's getting free college tuition because we need all this new brain power to study new stuff for the environment to come up with new solutions. Oh, we figured out how to way to mass produce this soil bacteria to pull all this methane out of the air so we're already reversing climate change, right? All the stuff Dr. McDougall talked about. You could implement that on a mass scale. There would be this mass transformation. We stopped this bombing. We're, cre we're not gonna be creating more terrorists. There's less terrorists now because we're not bombing them. And we're, imp we're exporting all of this green research that we're doing here in America. We would export it and share it with other countries. And we would go to the Middle East and instead of bomb it and set it on fire, we go, look, here's what we're gonna do. Here's permaculture. You have a desert, you have droughts, here's permaculture. We're helping this. 
Here's hospitals and roads and stuff to help. Instead of bombing Iraq, we build an infrastructure with that. Oh, but Graham, what about the radical terrorists? Well, we allowed them to get to power because we deposed democratically elected leaders. Look at the history of the Middle East. We've helped create, and then at the very least, stood back and allowed this fundamental Islam to take hold because we needed war and conflict to go in there and justify our war budget so that we could steal everybody's oil. We wouldn't need to do that anymore. Imagine if we were like the good guys around the world. And everyone was like, we went to Yemen and they were like, man, there's all these awful wars. And then America, you know, under President Sanders and VP Gabbard came in and like the war's over. We've replenished all this stuff. We have a green economy in Yemen that's specific to the geology, geography and climate of that region. Imagine that. It's all right there. It's all right there. Hey, everybody, like share and subscribe, hit the bell notification button. Even if you've done it before, YouTube is undoing that and they're unsubscribing people. Make sure you're subscribed, share the videos out on your social media, support what we're doing at patreon.com slash Graham Elwood, rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood, and come see Ron Placone and I on the road for the Progressive Comedy Tour. February, we're in Tucson and San Francisco. March, we are in Florida, Orlando, Tampa, and Miami. April, we are in Seattle and Portland, Oregon. And May, we are in Indianapolis, Detroit, and Cleveland. All my tour dates are at GrahamElwood.com. We're probably coming to a city near you. Join us. You show up alone, you leave a part of a community. Boom.